Hi everybody, welcome back to Carib Spice. Thank you for tuning in. This is going to be a very informal video because, you know what, honestly, I am highly distracted. This is what's going on right here. I have my computer tracking a flight. Okay, my mom was here for um, a couple of weeks. Uh, she came from the Caribbean to Missouri for a conference and then after that she came over to Texas to spend time with me and the hubby and um, her time was up this morning and I was so emotional because I didn't want my mom to leave you know I it, it was what it has been about two years since I've seen her um, and um, I was just really emotional it's just funny how that happens every time I see my family I think it's because I do not live in the Caribbean and you know so when I get time when I get the time um, when I get to spend time with them, it is always um, an emotional roller coaster for me. So I fought the tears. I cried my eyes out when I got home. I already miss her so much. But um, not that she's not used to flying or anything. She travels all the time, you know, for her job. She travels all the time. But um, my gosh, I miss her. And uh, if you don't know, if you're new to my channel, I'm actually from an island from the Car Caribbean, um, from Grenada. And so her flight is gonna, well her flight was from Dallas, Texas to Miami and all the way to Grenada. And Grenada is very south of the Caribbean, you know, this is South America right here and then north of that is Trinidad and then north of that is Grenada. So very, very south. Maybe one day I'll just kind of um, talk about my island a little bit more with you guys or if I travel, I'll probably uh, vlog that trip. Um, here I am five weeks later with uh, some answers to your questions so yes five weeks according to Instagram and um, I'm gonna try my very best to do justice and I hope I answer your questions as um, thoroughly as I can and just uh, to the point all right so very informal video is kind of hot um, and I'm a little bit distracted because I know my dad is probably gonna call me in a little bit so I'll try to be as fast as I can Okay, so the first question from Instagram, and I am looking at my phone. How did you meet your hubby? And that was also a question on my channel. So, um, and I know my hubby's already going to look at this and give you a totally different version, but I think we can agree on this response. I met my hubby, so okay, it, it was a, an ordinary work day. Um, I worked in a totally different city and I lived in a different city and um, it was a weekend so I think it was a Friday probably and they were having this huge Caribbean event in um, like two hours away in another city two hours away I don't want to give you too um, too much detail you know just for privacy reasons but I was standing there um, looking at the performances I was at the back of the theater I was late, you know, I was teaching and I had to rush two hours, We, you know, my friend and I had to do this two hour drive to get to this other city. So we were late to the theater, so we were standing at the back and I was just enjoying the performance because you know I love performances and whatever. I was standing there and for some reason, um, I felt eyes on me. He was checking me out. <laughs> He's probably going to disagree with that. but. Yes, I felt eyes on me, and so I was standing in, and he was kind of like watching me from the side, and I ignored him, you know, because I was like, why is this dude watching me like that? <laughs> my friend, my girlfriend, um, you know, introduced us because she, she knew him for a little bit before I even met him, and we sh the conversation just kind of started, and we just kind of continued talking, and that is how I met my hubby. We were just you know at the same place at the right time I guess I don't know I'm getting ready to do a husband tag and maybe he might give you a different version but in a nutshell I think we can agree on this version of the story okay so uh, <laughs> now another question is for how long have I been training well I've always been active I in high school I was into track and field. I ran competitively actually. Um, I was always into sports, not just track. I was always into sports. I was always very active. Um, always loved soccer. I even played on a little team up here in the United States. And um, 
you know, I was just always an active girl. However, I, you know, I got to the point where I just wasn't really, I wasn't feeling, I wasn't really feeling challenged with what I was doing. And I was a teacher and I just felt like everything kind of became routine. I was dancing and I absolutely love dancing. That is like my first passion. Yeah, <laughs> not bodybuilding. Dancing is really my first passion. And, um... I just kind of felt like, okay, I needed to challenge myself or do something new. You know, I was swimming, I was dancing, and I was always, you know, asking myself, what can I do to push myself? And, um, you know, the thought of bodybuilding is, is just something that kind of crossed my mind, by the way. And I was in the kitchen with my husband, and I said, you know, I think I want to do this. I think I want to bodybuild and get ready for some sort of competition. And from there, we started having a, um, a serious conversation. Um, as far as lifting weights with a purpose, that really started around 2012. I was always in the gym. I wasn't a cardio girl. I was lifting, but not heavy. I started lifting heavy um, back in 2012. And um, my the goal that I set to actually compete um, was probably around late 2013 okay that is where I started really paying attention to my diet when I say paying attention to my diet not that I was eating bad but that is where I started learning about macros and how to track my meals and track my nutrients and um, you know just really lifting with a purpose bodybuilding you know which I which I always um, you know I saw bodybuilding as an art so always looking for new ways to develop muscle and build muscle and all that so I hope uh, that answers your question um, pretty much but started lifting with a purpose in 2012 um, I just wanted to kind of change but change my dimensions develop my dimensions but in terms of getting ready to compete you know goals were redefined that was probably late 2013 and honestly guys it's not gonna change um, whether or not I decide to continue competing or not I'm always gonna be bodybuilding I've already set new goals for when I am through with my competitions um, care of spice will be working on her physique because it's gonna be a new challenge and I'm absolutely excited about it absolutely excited okay all right another question from one of my subscribers was um that was a while back what did i want to be okay when i was a senior in high school now first of all i was schooled in grenada um a lot of people think i went to school here like high school here that no i actually did college back home i went to high school everything back home and um, i even started working back home so i came here as an adult young adults i was out of my parents house as a young adult adult but i was actually teaching and working and whatnot back home and um grenada uh does not follow an american system education the education system we follow more of a british type of system so um the question said you know when i was a senior in high school uh we that actually we do not have that um we have uh, forms, we have grades now, we have had grades for a while, so grade one, two, whatever. And then in high school we have, um, I'm, I'm not sure, but here a uh, senior is around 18, well 17 going on 18, but 18 for the most part. Um, back home you're probably out of high school, not probably, definitely out of high school at that age. So we spent five years in high school, yes but we get out at a younger age i hope that makes sense um so around my third year so five years in high school oh my gosh this is going all over the place let me try to have some structure here we spend five years in high school uh the first two years you do just like general core subjects and um by your third year of high school you should kind of have an idea of where your strengths are what your knack is for me it was um, definitely the sciences because now I'm a chemistry teacher but I always dabbled in fine arts I like I liked I really love not liked dance and then on the other hand I was um, also into foreign languages as a matter of fact I taught Spanish back home kind of interesting yeah so um, 
by my third year in high school, I knew pretty much, okay, I had a thing for the sciences, for math and sciences, and I decided, okay, probably I should start looking at something in the medical field. So not necessarily um, a medical doctor. I didn't really have an interest in um, becoming a medical doctor. I always wanted to be a dentist. I even bought the book and everything like that, looked at schools and everything like that. Um, but my career path didn't take me there. I just, I guess after being a teacher home, I just realized I really enjoyed teaching. And so after um, continuing my studies in the United States, I decided to continue teaching. And that is why I, uh, I'm now a chemistry teacher. Uh, other than that, initially, I studied to become a medical technologist and I, um, I lived in Oklahoma. So I'm now in Texas. I lived in Oklahoma back in the day and worked at um, one of the hospitals there, but that was very short-lived. So that is for that in a nutshell. So if you were the person to ask that question, um, I always had a thing for an area in the medical field. But just like any other normal kid, <laughs> um, I also had interest in um, becoming a professional dancer. And by that I meant, you know, Latin ballroom and contemporary dancer. Um, and that quickly changed when I realized I probably wasn't going to make a, a, a reasonable income. And um, I even thought about um, architecture at one time. And then very late, um, just before I was through with college back home, I even thought about pursuing a master's in well, not a master, sorry, pursuing a degree in some kind of law, international law at the time, I think. So it's kind of all over the place, but I always knew my strength was in science. So hopefully that answers your question. All right, um, another question on here from Instagram. Um, what does it mean by counting your, counting your macros? And is a high protein diet necessary so in a nutshell and I'm going to do a separate video to talk about macros and what I do and what I learned about counting and tracking my macros a macro macro is just a short term for macronutrient okay macronutrients um, are energy providing molecules that we need we humans need in a large quantity and we basically have three um, macronutrients that are necessary for our bodily function so we have um, protein we have carbs carbohydrates and fats or lipids depending on what you say um, these uh, groups of nutrients provide um, energy in the form of uh, calories so um, protein at the top of my head protein provides four calories per gram of protein carbs provide four grams i'm sorry four calories per gram of carb and your fats or lipids provide nine calories per gram all right so each um macronutrient provides a, a different amount of calories um so basically that's what they are you will hear people talk about tracking macros and counting macros that becomes very very important um, when it comes to your specific goals. So for me, for my period of bulking, um, which ended in, in April of this year, I had to make sure I was meeting and exceeding my macros at a certain time. And um, of course, there'll be a period of time, a period of time when I begin to cut, when that will um, change. But uh, for whoever asked that question, that um, that is something that is specific um, per individual. And I will definitely a share a video with you on macros just macros because I too had to learn when I started this whole bodybuilding um, journey okay okay so another question that was asked um, was well is a high protein diet necessary for muscle building yes because um, your your protein the building blocks of protein are the amino acids and your amino acids are essentially building blocks of muscle. Muscle and protein, uh, they're basically the same, okay? However, um, if you just consume protein and you ignore the other macronutrients and the, the other nutrients, especially the essential amino acids, uh, you're not going to get 
the most out of uh, the process. I hope that makes sense because a lot of people tend to um, convince themselves that they need to take uh, shakes or protein shake every day or they would skip a meal entirely or just not have a balanced meal at all and just consume powders and protein shakes over and over again. And that is part marketing. Everything that you see out there with regards to protein and supplements and so on is directly associated with bigger muscle and so on and so forth. And there are tons of studies um, to, sh to, you know, to show that exceeding a certain amount of protein per day um, is not really gonna give you an added edge, I guess, or more muscle in the long run. Now, the studies go both ways. There are studies to support and studies to, um, you know, that counteract that claim. So, other than that, a general rule of thumb is you want to get at least 0.8 to 1, 0.8 to 1 gram of protein per um, pound of, um, you know, per, per pound your, with regards to your body weight. And that is essentially what I went on. I just really tried to um, meet my protein intake, in, intake with the foods that I'm eating. I mean, in a nutshell, you know, if you do consume too little or less protein daily, your body is not going to have the essential amino acids that it needs to um, repair the muscles after you work out. You know, that is how you build muscle. It's not just about eating. It's, it's a combination of working out and consuming the proper foods in the right quantities. I think, you know, a final note on this um, question with regards to protein intake. If you're having issues building muscle, increasing your protein intake might not necessarily be the, the solution. There could be other factors such as your routines, your scheme, just your general nutrition. Are you tracking your nutrients? Are you tracking your macros and so on and so forth? So stacking up on protein does not necessarily mean that you're going to correct that issue. And at the same time, eating an outrageous amount of protein um, daily does not guarantee you that you will guarantee that you're going to build quality muscle. Okay, I, I honestly believe, and I'm just talking from my experience, and there are also studies and other evidence out there, um, a balanced diet with a high protein intake, yes, but that should not be the only thing, um, is substantial with regards to building muscle. All right, and then the final question for now, um, this person actually sent me um, a private message or a direct message, and um, it's from a younger girl, a younger lady, and she asked, how do I feel about young girls, <laughs> especially um, teenagers, someone under 15 years of age um, who is considering getting into bodybuilding? Um, what advice would you give? What thoughts? What are your thoughts? And um, would you advise against it? I had to read because, you know, there were little errors in there, but that's okay. Uh, you know what? I grew up in a family where I wasn't, once I wanted to do something that was positive and uplifting, my parents were very supportive. I did a lot for a teenager, um, whether it was for the community or representing my country in something or sports, performance, whatever it, it was, I was able to do that. And I can, I always say to people, I, I've had a very um full teenage um life okay if, 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 if you want to put it like that i have always been a go-getter and for me to stand here and discourage you from pursuing something such as bodybuilding would absolutely make me a hypocrite um not only am i speaking from a personal experience i'm also speaking as a woman and I'm speaking to you definitely as a teacher and someone who is living the lifestyle. Um, you know, this is not the worst thing a young lady can be uh, doing at the moment or uh, the worst thing a young lady can choose to do ever. Um, there are bodybuilders who get involved with other aspects of bodybuilding, whether they get on steroids or whatever. And the people have their preferences and to each his own. But for me, um, if you're doing this as a hobby and you just want to 
uh, pursue something that is challenging, by all means, go ahead. You know, go ahead because at the end of the day, the last thing I would like for anyone to have is regret, especially knowing how rewarding um, this, this lifestyle is. You exercise, you feel good, you learn so much, you meet amazing people, um, you get stronger, your dimensions change, and you just feel good about yourself. And I honestly think at the end of the day, that is what truly matters. Just being comfortable with who you are, and once it's positive, you know, just pursue the things that make you happy once you're positive. So yes, absolutely nothing wrong with bodybuilding um, just know what what your goals are do not ignore other aspects of your life because I'm sure you're in school and that is also important so bodybuilding can become very addictive and very time-consuming so make sure you work things out and you let your parents know if, if that is also important to you and try to um, you know hopefully they're supportive of that um, you will learn so much. You will learn so much about yourself and you will learn so much about others. And you're young. And the worst that can happen is that you try this or you start it and you absolutely hate it. Or you try it and you live the lifestyle and you absolutely love it. Alright, so this is all I've got, guys. I really enjoyed this Q&A. I know I was a, probably talking a little bit, you know, fast. But I really wanted to get this done before the sun went down and it's really going down now. And I was a little bit distracted because I wanted to make sure my mama got home safe. And she, looking over at the computer, she has indeed landed safely. So I'm really grateful for that. And um, what else do I need to tell you? I never try to be perfect on my channel. And I know sometimes I do this with my thoughts. But you know what? It's not about being perfect. My personality comes out here a lot. And it's not about being perfect. It's never about being perfect on a carrot spice. It's always about being the best you. Even with your fitness goals, it's always about being the best you. We strive for progress and not perfection on here. Okay. Um, I have some things that I'm excited about. I have. I know I have an interview with one of my um, favorite weight loss stories. I have a collaboration coming up and um it's just it's just fun we're just doing what we're doing we're trying to keep you guys motivated and um, i appreciate each and every one of you if you are yet to check out my instagram please do so i definitely share a lot more on there than i than i do here on youtube um because instagram just kind of lends itself to that no kidding though i do get a chance to share more photos and things like that on there so check out my instagram at the carob spice okay and without further ado i will see you guys in the next video remember i upload every sunday and wednesday adios bye